Hi, I'm Luke. Today on Out of Darts, we're checking out the new Phoenix Blaster from Worker. Ooh, let's do. Anybody that's been in this hobby for a while knows that Worker is one of the biggest contributors to third-party blasters, shells, mod springs, magazines, other parts and accessories. They've been a big partner in our own shop here because they have such a wide range of different products. This is something completely different from Worker. Now, they have previously offered quite a few different shells, but most of those were based on either very similar internals to the Retaliator, the Long Shot, or to the Strife, in the case of the Swordfish and the Dominator. This blaster is unique altogether. It features completely unique pusher system, a rather oddball flywheel three-stage system with mini flywheels. We'll get to that in a little bit. And a surprisingly strange form factor. Now, I think it's really exciting to see Worker venturing into a complete blaster because the more blasters we get out there, the better, especially when they're injection molded. It gets them down to a price point where more people can afford them than your average 3D printed blaster. That said, there are some definite quirks with this unit, and I think it's going to be a very mixed bag to shortcut the conversation here, but I think some people are gonna really love it and some are not. Um, but let's get right down to it. This is a fully automatic three stage blaster. It uses three sets of 132 motors from Worker. These are their mid power motors and three sets of flywheels. It is a mag through grip blaster with a very nice mag release. The ergonomics are about what you would expect with a blaster that has the mag through the grip. The angled mags have improved this substantially. There are both 18 rounds available. These are sold separately. They always come in a variety of colors. We'll link you down in the description to an overview video about all the different mags. We're also now offering these little uh, slanted edge or angled edge adapters from Ton, which give you two more capacity and a nice marking to your magazines. This blaster is compatible with both of them. It's got a pulse width modulator or PWM right up front that allows you to control the rate of fire so I can fire at full speed or dial that down lower. Overall, I think that's a pretty nice functionality and it's an, a decent spot to actually have the knob in. Assuming you had a foregrip here, it'd be pretty easy to reach up here and grab the knob and adjust your rate of fire. That said, I'm a little surprised about the rate of fire itself. I'd peg that at about six or seven darts per second. And in today's competitive blaster market, that's pretty darn slow, especially when you've got three stages of flywheels to help in theory keep up with a high rate of sustained fire, I'd really like to see this shoot a little bit faster. One of the first things I'm gonna be doing is checking out what motors can go in here to up that rate of fire. It's a standard 130 motor, maybe a 132, but regardless, we know we have options. It should be pretty easy to toss a fang or a kraken in there and ramp that speed up there. Certainly should even be possible to replace that with one of the blue gear motors that we sell to uh, actually uh, solidify and uh, max out your rate of fire. And since you do have the PWM, should also give us a lot of options for uh, really tuning that in and dialing it up or down. Um, this blaster is not select fire. I've had a couple people ask that already, but it certainly could be with the right board and additional work. The blaster is powered by a 3S LiPo. The battery of course is not included. And I was very pleasantly surprised to see that it features a very large battery compartment. Uh, this is one of our largest packs. I think it is our actual largest pack 
at the time of publishing this video. It's a 2200 milliamp hour 60C zippy battery, and that fits in here no problem. There's also still enough room for the cords and cables and even a LiPo alarm. So one of my biggest fears with this was that it was gonna require, you know, a, a battery stock or some other way to connect the battery. Turns out a uh, worker was quite wise here in allowing enough room inside for a battery that can properly power six motors at stall when they first turn on and power up. That's a pretty heavy load on the battery. Uh, in some more detailed videos in the future, I'll definitely uh, check that current and see, see how heavy that actually is pulling. But I suspect a lot of users are gonna maybe consider rewiring this to a different setup. When I first picked up this blaster, one of the things I noticed was that it was substantially larger than I had thought in photos. Now, on one hand, I'm really glad to see that because we do get the nice large battery compartment. But on the other hand, it really looks like a brick. I feel like someone took an angled magwell, drew a square, chopped off a couple corners, threw on a stock mount point and some Picatinny rails, and yeah, that's pretty much a blaster, right? Uh, it's a little chunky. It might, some people might really enjoy the sort of uh, cosmetic additions on the sides. I think it's a little funky personally and it's definitely, to me, not going to be a sidearm. When you feel this with a large battery in here, it is very top heavy, and it's got some pretty good heft to it. It weighs more than a Strife with this battery in it because generally you wouldn't be able to fit a battery this large like inside of a Strife or a Swordfish. That said, I think this really isn't about being a secondary blaster like a sidearm because unless you are just a absolute unit yourself, this is just not, uh, it would be easier to carry a Strife just due to the weight alone. Uh, but if you were comfortable carrying a Strife, you'd probably be okay with this. And maybe there's a holster we can work out that'll fit these guys well. That remains to be seen. But that said, I really do think where this thing is going to excel is turning it into a primary. Uh, with a stock on here, you've got a nice compact form factor. This is actually what I kind of love to run personally. And I think a standard or angled foregrip here would make this a really great run and gun sort of run around really move really quickly and um, react fast because it's a lightweight little package for a primary touching on the through grip again with all blasters through grips have never been my favorites now i know some users really really love them and so that's that's what you've got here it does make for a very clean profile as far as how the blaster looks especially with the included 10 round shorty mag but overall i think for me, it's a little bit large and chunky, and you're never gonna get away from that. There's no way to design something more comfortable without uh, making so little material in the grip that you just don't have a uh, solid purchase. That said, to compare this to other through mag grips, it is one of the most comfortable I've held. Uh, the trigger well is slightly cramped, but not too bad. It feels pretty good for my hands, especially once my hand's in there and there's no obvious pinch points or pain points. And you know, None of them are on the wall, but you know, compared to Elite 2.0 stuff, this is wildly comfortable. So way to go, Hasbro. Worker makes one blaster and it's more comfortable than your entire lineup. Moving on to performance, this is where things get a little sticky. This blaster has six flywheels, six motors, three stages. It hits 150, maybe 160 FPS. Definitely not over a 160 FPS average. Some of you are probably just rolling your eyes right now because I honestly had to say and think the same thing. There's so many problems with that. Uh, the first being there's room for more than uh, this size flywheel in here. There literally, I think we could design a cage. I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty confident we could fit a regular size cage in here. A Kiriaka cage, uh, also known as the Daybreak, that geometry can hit 160 or 170 in a single stage with two motors, one stage, and this is only matching it with three sets of flywheels. I do think there's room to improve this, to drive that 150 well above uh, 200 if we want to. Uh, Foam Blast with their multi-stage cages for the Hurricane have proved that you can hit nearly 200 with a two-stage, but three-stage at the end of the day is marketing. It is not, um, as much as I love Worker and their products, this is not a good decision from an engineering standpoint. It can be outperformed with just two stages, which will be more reliable, 
and uh, less expensive. Or you could go to a single stage with full-size flywheels, get the same performance, and even, again, more, redundant, uh, more reliability, not redundancy. Anytime you've got a three-stage blaster or a two-stage blaster, you're doubling your probability that a motor failure will knock out your flywheels or knock out your whole blaster. Uh, because in a three-stage system like this, if just one single motor were to jam or fail or burn out, the entire system is not going to fire and you're going to need to fix it. Um, and because you've got six motors instead of two, like a normal setup, it's far more likely for that to happen. Now that said, I don't think these are very high crush spacing. I haven't actually opened this up to measure yet. I am looking forward to diving in, but I wanted to do sort of the retail review of this blaster first. Ultimately on the performance side, there's definitely some room for improvement. But considering it is an out of the box blaster that shoots 160, 150 FPS, and it's a flywheeler, and more importantly, comes pre-wired, pre-soldered, ready to fire, this is a game changer, question mark. Uh, as far as I'm aware, there's no flywheel blaster you can buy off the shelf that hits like this. In fact, I don't think there's anything on the shelf that you can buy other than from a third party vendor who's modding them for you or a 3D printed vendor who's printing a blaster like say our Jupiter. But I don't think there's a blaster out there that you can get that performs this well as a flywheeler and is ready to fire. That makes the Worker Phoenix something of a novelty, at least for now. Um, this was literally open the box, plug in LiPo, fire blaster, ready to go. That puts this blaster at actually being fairly competitive in the grand scheme of things. I don't have these blasters in stock yet. We are absolutely going to carry them because I always like seeing new blasters. I, I'm excited to see what people will do painting these and what other kind of mods we're going to be able to come up with to improve the performance because I do think there's some major room for that. But the price point is looking to be in the 125 to 150-ish range. Um, probably more like 150, honestly, by the time it hits the US shops. There will always be importers uh, that ship directly to customer that are going to be cheaper. We can't match their price because they don't pay tariffs because they're going directly to customer and we do pay tariffs on everything, uh, at least 10% on toys, uh, more when there are motors involved. But uh, I think we're looking at probably close to $150 price point for this. So it's not an inexpensive blaster, but it does come fully assembled. What I would like to hear from you, however, is would you want just the shells? Because I'm thinking Worker hasn't thought that we want shells. And personally, I know my audience, I think many of you would love to just have the shell and be able to 3D print a cage and wire up your own setup instead of paying extra for the six motors and the cage and all the soldering to be done in advance. But I'd be really curious to hear down in the comments. We'll probably throw up a YouTube poll on this as well just to gauge interest to see whether that's something you would all want. Mechanically, this blaster is very simple. The mag release is awesome. It's a full drop. It's a single little button here. It is probably the best in-grip mag release that I have felt. It's very easy to actuate and it is very comfortable, no sharp edges, and it just drops right into your hand, which is extremely satisfying. Uh, on the inside, we've got a standard two switch setup, no MOSFET or anything like that. So this, these were very easy to wire. You've got a large, I assume probably a 21 amp micro switch up front, but a full size micro switch as we would call it. And then a sub miniature smaller switch in the back, which is just for the firing circuit since there's not as much current going through that switch. I also wanted to mention that the pusher is a slightly different variation than we've seen before, but it looks to be fairly solid like it should be a pretty rock solid design, honestly, and it does have a trigger. It's a three switch setup, so it has a pusher return where each, each time you fire it, you will end up in the rear position because of that switch. And that could also be part of the reason that they don't have the rate of fire higher, because if you go too high on the RPM here, you will eventually get a runaway where that return switch no longer works properly. So. I think eventually we'll be looking at putting a board in this to make it select fire. I think that would be a lot of fun. There is just a ton of room back here where we could sneak a select fire switch and board. Um, it's not lacking for space inside. The last thing I want to cover, and this is really one of the big ones, is accuracy. Short darts through mini flywheels are already generally less accurate than the full-size counterpart. And I 
believe the theory here is that there is less contact with the dart, so there's more chance for the dart to wobble as it goes through the flywheel system. Now going through three systems and then through a approximately, I'd say 25 millimeter, 30 millimeter barrel here, uh, aluminum barrel, there really is a lot of opportunity for the dart to just go wonky. And in my test firing, it really has not been the most accurate blaster. So if you're buying this thing, don't expect to be shooting as accurately as your average Springer. They're gonna put you down. It's really gonna be about moving fast, rate of fire, magazine capacity, and uh, probably best for close quarters battles, as I mentioned before. That said, I think this thing is gonna be a ton of fun. I am always excited to see something new. And since Hasbro has given us nothing, I am thrilled that Worker is doing cool stuff, doing something new. I think this one's gonna be pretty polarizing, so I would love to hear from you in the comments as well. What do you think of this thing? Um, you've only seen, obviously, a couple videos out so far, but I would love to hear your opinions and what, what you think it looks like and what you would like to see on the shop from us with this blaster. In the end, I'm going to give this one a three out of five. I think there's some definite room for improvement and with some modding potential and potentially swapping out the cage and doing something different, it could be a better blaster. But there are just some serious engineering issues here that really stopped me from wanting to give it four stars. That said, I'm still gonna mod this, have a lot of fun with it, and it's gonna be a great blaster to field. I just don't think it's a home run like some of the other blasters from Dart Zone have been this year. Ultimately, it is a flywheel blaster that shoots 150, 160 FPS right out of the box with no modding necessary. It's the first of its kind, so it's very, very close to me to saying that I give this a four star, but you can take my review as you will and make your own decision. Thank you so much for watching. I am really enjoying making more content with my editor Perry here. We have got the blaster wall going. We are still working on building out the studio up here and getting things a little more organized, but our goal is to keep increasing and improving the content. So keep leaving us your feedback in the comments. We do listen, we are reading and trying to improve every single week. Until next time, I'm out of darts.